and justice for all. All right, thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Okay, I call this May 6th morning commissioner's meeting in order. We have the auditor, all three commissioners, and the county attorney present. Uh, first on our agenda, we'll have an EMS update from Mr. Anderson. Um, yes, as you well know, we're negotiating with Parkview. Parkview will, will have the rough draft, uh, I hope today. Um, and then uh, we'll look it over, and if it's okay with the attorney, I'd like to say we'd have it. But Gail, within the next week, mm -hmm. we should have it signed, hopefully. If everything, if everything looks like it's going good. I know we had a conference call um, with Barry the other day to ask him some questions. Um, so that all looks good. There has been, I hear all kinds of rumors flowing around, but just so we're on the, all on the same page, we are not, and Lutheran has not, officially contacted us about doing anything else. From, I hear that, you know, some of the bosses are going around saying that we won't negotiate with them, we won't talk to them. They pulled it, and these guys are here as my witnesses. They pulled their bid on a letter. They didn't even come in and talk to us and ask us if we would do anything else. They sent a letter to the auditor's office and to Barry Ritter is how that got done. We have not contacted, been contacted from any of the upper management of Lutheran since. So, just so we get that straight, I hear rumors that why ain't we negotiate with Lutheran still? Well, they, they pulled the contract and, or the, yeah, they pulled their bid and never heard from them since. So. Just, just to put that to ease. So that's all I got on that, Brian. Okay. All right. We have uh, the FEDCO contract amendment. Um, we are uh, uh, the contract is one hundred thirty thousand dollars, and we are pulling out the fifteen thousand six hundred ninety-seven dollars for the. Uh, Northern Indiana, Northern Central Indiana Regional Planning Group, which we are associated with, uh, because they would like the county to pay that um, that fee. All the other count, all the other six counties or five counties pay that. So we're just cleaning up some um, some bookkeeping stuff, I guess, for that organization. So um, you guys have looked that over. Do you have any questions, Michael? Any good? So okay. So I guess. Uh, and entertain a motion then to approve the amended contract for Fed code. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? That motion carries 3 0. This will go before the council also. Okay. Then we have the contract um, for. Uh, North Central Indiana Regional Planning Council. Uh, the yearly contract, the amount is $15,697. You guys have a chance to look at it? Over? Yep, same thing we had before, we're just paying it different. Yep, yep, we're just paying different. Same services, everything will be the same. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? The motion carries. Rio. from uh, Lindsay Bartz. Um, she's got the group. Uh, there's a yogi. She's called the Yogis. They're doing some health and awareness stuff throughout the summer with the city <clears throat> using some different grounds. She wanted to know if they could use the old uh, jail uh, lot over here uh, randomly through the summer on Saturdays. Uh, they pass back and forth between the city, parks, and, the, and that. So. Yep, so mm -hmm. yeah, we ain't conflict or nothing else, I'm good. Yeah, let me use it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so are you bringing a person to Liz, It's Lindsay Bartz. That's her whole organization. Well, yeah, let's see. She's a... Uh, What's the name of the gal? Is it Lady Bug? Roots, Roots Yoga. What is it? Roots Yoga. Yoga. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, somebody has it. Thanks, Randy. Okay, then we have. He goes there. No. Randy's <laughs> <laughs> right. a gold member. We have a riddle on uh, hospital board reappointment. Uh, the board has sent us a letter um, uh, asking for a new appointment. Greg Millinger, his term will be up on June 5th. So, questions on that? And then take a motion to reappoint Greg Millinger. Well, he's done a good job. I think we're okay. Well. So, uh, I'll make that motion. <clears throat> All right. All in favor? Motion carries. Three of them. Okay. You guys uh, have seen the travel request? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions or concerns on those? I didn't see any. Did you see any, Dave? Nope. Okay. entertain a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. We'll sign those afterwards. Okay, department updates. Um, John, got our highway department. Sorry, we will start with bid lighting. Yep. <coughs> Come back and finish. <coughs> sure. Okay. So we got bid opening for uh, community costing projects. We've got three of them here. I'll start with uh, Brooks. Construction on uh, number one, 400 north from State Road 17 to 725 east, County Road 1200 west. Uh, they have 365,127 dollars and 50 cents. 127, what was the cent? Three, yeah, uh, 50. 365,127 and 50 cents. Number two, for 900 west, Old State Road 17, from 600 west, Olson Road, to State Road 110, $424,228 even, 424-228. Number three, 600 north. From County Line to State Road 17, $375,857.40. And number four, 75 North from 700 North County Line, County Road 1200 West. To 1100 West, 119,767. Main Street, number five. Main Street from 75 North to County Line, 109,451 dollars. Total, total bid. One million three hundred ninety-four thousand four hundred and thirty dollars and ninety cents. <coughs> Get all those? Yep. I think so. Okay. The next one here is Finn and Brown. $66,327.50. And 
number two, 900 West, Old State Road 17, from 600 West, Olson Road, to State Road 110, 431,921, even. Number three, 600 North, from County Line, to State Road 17, 378,000, $895.40. Number four, West, 75 North from 700 North County Line or County Road 1200 West to 1100 West. $117,690. Number five, Main Street from 75 North to County Line, 111,713. Total bid, $1,406,546.90. $56,798. Number three, 600 North from County Line to State Road 17, $397,166.40. Number four, 75 North from 700 North County Line or County Road 1200 West to 1100 West, $121,092. Number five, Main Street from 75 North to County Line, $111,956. Total bid, $1,469. Thousand three hundred eleven dollars and ninety cents. That's all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take it out. We can review Katie those. Katie and I will review them, and then we can bring them back and get the award one. Yes, I do. Yep. Okay. Kathy, did you cut anything? Uh, not really, other than friendly reminder, taxes are due Friday. <clears throat> Just what everybody wanted to hear, Kathy. I know, I know, <laughs> unfortunately. Thanks for the good news, huh? Yeah. All right, Travis, Sheriff. <clears throat> Morning. I don't have a whole lot. Um, there would be a couple ordinances, I believe it's on the docket for you guys to, to review. One is the, uh, the jail and detention money, the 70-15-15 split. Um, all that was for was just basically just clearing up exactly what operational costs are and what maintenance costs are. Yeah. They don't have that. Oh, okay. I thought that needed to be reviewed by the commissioners too. It does. It's got to be signed by the commissioners. Because it's a joint. It, everybody's got to honestly agree on it. Council signed it at the last. Yeah, meeting. they signed it at the last meeting. All right, well, I'll bring that up at the next meeting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just get it to us so we can review it. You'll have it. Yeah. Um, and that's basically all I was doing was just clearing up exactly defining what the operational funds were and what the three different accounts for the yeah, what the maintenance. You know, yeah. Just yeah. make a definition on that. 
Um, another one would be the uh, alarms, alarm ordinance. Um, yeah, no? Christina? No. They don't have any of the ordinances. Okay. All right. Well, we'll talk about that next meeting then. Okay. So, 74 inmates this morning, 24 of them were out of county, seven federal, four DOCs um, holds. Um, I do have another ordinance for Grant County, holding Grant County inmates. Um, Basically, it's the same ordinance that you've signed for every other county. It just says Grant County. You want to Holly take a quick look at it, yeah. please? Yeah it's, yeah, it's the same format. It just says Grant County on there, Grant County Sheriff. Um, they, they reached out a couple weeks ago and asked if we could hold some of their inmates due to overcrowding issues. Wabash County did take their inmates back. They opened up their new facilities. So, um, so that's that. I think Corrections Week is this week. I sent everybody everything for that. We've got a breakfast Wednesday. Get like to come out and attend. Um, and then next week is law enforcement week. We'll have a lunch next Thursday for that. So we'll do some fun things in between all of that. So breakfast Wednesday at what time was it? 8 o'clock? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Okay. Um, but other than that, I think that's all I have. Okay. We'll, we'll yes. sign that as soon as she says okay. if she says it's okay here in a minute. All right. Any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to give some updates. Uh, first of all, the boiler, they started changing out the boiler at the courthouse this morning. Uh, that project will take probably 14, 15 days. So that's uh, started. Um, I did get some quotes on the replacement of the chiller at the courthouse. Um, I am waiting on one more, and then I'll get with you guys about that. And um, I talked to you guys a little bit about that before. Um, I, that's the primary chiller. I'm going to use the backup chiller for the summer and uh, use the number one chiller just as a backup because there's three compressors out of it right now. Um, hopefully, I, it'll make it through and, and um, it takes like 48 weeks to order a new chiller. So even if I ordered one now, it would be too late. Um, so um, as soon as I get the quotes, I'll get with you and, and see if we can maybe towards the end of the fall we can do something to order one in through to have it here next spring. Um, I wanted to let you know about the annex chiller up here on the roof. Um, I did an inspection with CORE a couple days ago and uh, we do have a couple compressors going out on that chiller. They're going to give me a price on it uh, on trying to get it fixed and see if we can save it instead of trying to replace it. So I'll get back with you on that also. I wanted to be aware of it. Um, the new lights, um, the 2x2 two two LED lights are in, and, and those guys are going to start replacing lights at the end of the week. And uh, I'm going to start over at the courthouse because I have a couple of offices over there that are pretty much needing it now. And then it'll be a slowly throughout the year thing that we'll replace and get all LED by the end of the year. Um, on the annex building, we've had a leak. I guess it was before my time, but it's been down there in um, the surveyor's office along that wall, uh, that whole stretch right here. Uh, it's like 30 feet long. I have a company, um, they're going to send me um, a quote today on how much it's going to be to dig down and get that sealed so that we can get that fixed. So they'll have to dig down seal it from the outside? Then. Yes, and uh, we'll have to rip out some of the shrubs on that side to, to do it. But I'm gonna get a quote today. And they're supposed to have a two. Well, they put a tile down there, and then two to take water away and keep pressure um, off. Or? They said that they would look at that as we get down in there to see how bad or what they're gonna do. <coughs> but it's a lifetime guarantee seal too. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then last but not least, um, TP Mechanics has been taking care of our service um, on the courthouse the annex and the probation building for the last year on um, servicing our HVAC units and chillers and boilers and all that and changing our filters out. Um, that expires as of June 1st, our contract with them. Um, I put a couple of bids out, or had a couple of companies put some bids in, I should say. Um, and the total bid for CORE is $15,219. Uh, OJS put a bid in at $17,661. Um, so with your blessing, I know Chad's up next, and uh, we've talked together about CORE, and he's going to give you his info, but I would like to go with CORE. Um, they're, they're cheaper, and they've been doing a ton of the work here, and 
I trust them. And I'd like to stick with them. I'm good. And I'll, and I'll yeah. get you the contract and have you guys sign. Yeah. That's okay. All right. That's all I have. Do we want to go ahead and vote on that so you, we can sign it whenever it gets it? Or? Yeah, yeah, if you'd, if you'd yeah. like to. Yeah. What was what was the dollar amount again? Uh, $15,219 for core. Okay. And you're taking a motion then to approve the core contract for $15,219 for the service contract? Or the so moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3-0. All right. Thank you. I'll get you the contract for something. Thank you, Kerry. All right. Thank you. Hey, Chad. Maintenance jail. Really the only thing I have is the PM contracts, like he was saying, and my bid from CORE was $14,306, and from OJS it was $14,250, so CORE was, what, $56 <coughs> more, but I, I don't see a reason to have two different companies when we're familiar with them. You like the way they do the work here? Yeah. You're, you're good with them. Yeah. And I I had sent an email to uh, TP Mechanics, and they're done with us out there at June 1st also. So. Okay. All right, then. I'd be entertaining a motion then to uh, approve the core contract for the jail for $14,306. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3-0. Right. Everybody else going good out there? Yeah. Yeah, they uh, have been fertilizing and spraying the grass, and it looks a million times better. I don't know if you guys have been by it or not. Good. It's looking nice. They got it all, the mulch all refreshed. And so, good. Going good. good. Thank you, Chad. Thanks, Chad. Yep. Okay, Dale. <laughs>
that I apply for every year. It was paid for today. It always is a year behind, so I applied for $11,000 uh, last year and $9,000 uh, for the deputy. So you should have had $20,000, but until I see that receipt in, I'm not, don't quote me on that. So they do pay part of the deputy? They do, currently okay. at this I couldn't time. Remember if they we did uh, receive an email that they are cutting funding and that may not be available. Um, I will tell you that. Um, but we'll continue to fill out those grants accordingly that is needed, so. And then uh, this Thursday we'll be doing the Rochester uh, School Safety Walkthrough at 10 a.m. Uh, we do that every year uh, so they can help them with their grant and for us to become better familiar um, on the grounds at the schools. So other than that, I don't have anything else unless you have any questions. I don't. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jerry Corner. Good morning. How's it going? It's going along just fine. Thanks. <laughs> just wanted to give you a few updates, uh, like on our data and statistics for this year. Uh, total of, and this is effective May 1st. Um, we had 46 people that have passed away in the county, and of that, uh, there's 26 men or 26 women and 20 men. But of that, our coroner's calls we've served about 16, and of that, six females and 10 males. Just to let you know, so that's approximately 33 percent of the people that pass away here in the county that we're investigating their deaths or trying to help the family. Um, our procedures so far this year, we've had six autopsies, uh, one toxicology that we performed, and um, we've had 10 natural deaths, and then three people have taken their lives. Um, we're still awaiting three uh, autopsy results, and just wanted to let you know that. Uh, next month, we have our big seminar, our educational seminar in Indianapolis. We're looking forward to that. Um, we do have the second biggest in the United States, and it'll be bigger and better than ever this year, I can tell you. So we're looking forward. We're all fired up to go to that and learn more and be able to help our community. So that's about all I have today. It's more brief. <laughs> well, thank you for your Thanks, Jerry. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Yes. Have a great week and be safe. Thank you. Uh, Josh, I think. Good morning, all of you. Good morning. A few updates don't have much. Um, Otter's office is starting the electronics claim process. Deb and I have reached out to various departments, and I know Chantal has worked with the departments as far as giving them an update. We still have a few departments that need scanners. Um, last week, with the claim period, Deb and I submitted claims electronically. Went smooth. Really not much to worry about. Departments can use their RICO uh, scanners or linear scanners that they have uh, in their departments, the copiers, or they can go with the desktop. The desktop is easier. Um, one of the problems with the, the copiers is it automatically names the <coughs> file, so they have to go in and rename every single file, make sure they don't get mixed up. Um, as far as phones are concerned, uh, phone company got a hold of us last week. We got the first batch of phones in. I don't know if some some department heads have noticed, others have not. The phones are outdated. They don't automatically update at the end of the night like they should. Um, that's due to the fact that they're no longer supported through RTC. So the phones will be rolling out. We're going to start with the detention center this week. We're going to pick them up this morning or this afternoon and start installing those and swapping the old out. Um, a lot of phones, they've served their purpose. Unfortunately, they're just coming to an end of their life. So those are going to be replaced. Um, what happens to the old ones? The old ones basically <laughs> scrap. There's really not much we can do with them. Unfortunately, like I said, they don't update. We can hold on to them and see if there's anybody that's willing to sit there and, and purchase them. Um, we can go that route and see. Probably won't get much for them, but it's something. We could try that route first. I just know we're going to have a lot of phones. A lot of phones. So, okay. Uh, any questions on that? Nope. Website, Dave and I and Devin sat last week, went over the website. 
Devin and I are going to send an email out to all the department heads and let them know that they need to scan over their pages, their department pages, find out what still works, what doesn't work. Um, Devin and I will sit down with them and kind of go over what changes they want made. That if possible, we prefer them to sit there and reach out via email, just take screenshots of their pages, mark down what they want changed, what they want left intact, and uh, go about it that way. Uh, I'd like to get that stuff done before June get that taken care of. So that's moving right along. Uh, Carrie and Devin um, were able to get the camera replaced outside the courthouse, so that's been fixed. Um, Carrie was able to get a lift, which we appreciate, and uh, Carrie and Devin, which I appreciate, were able to sit there and go up on the <laughs> lift and get taken care of. <laughs> Don't like heights, huh? I'm not a big fan. Uh, <laughs> And then we've got some server work and changes that need to be made with certain applications. ProQA over in Dispatch is one of them. Uh, on that this week also. And then I will be in here tomorrow for elections. So that is about it. Unless you guys have any questions for me. Okay. I don't think so. I like the looks on your website. It's looking good. I do too. It's coming along. It's been a pretty easy process so far. Good. Because so. we need one desperately. Yeah. Yep, yep. And I know, you know, just to kind of elaborate a little bit more on it, Dave and I and Devin have really spent a lot of time going over what has worked and where the traffic lies on our current website. So we want to build upon that and then, of course, try to direct a little bit more traffic to other areas also. Sure. Um, in the past, with the original website, it was pretty much standard that certain departments really didn't have anything they wanted to put up that we really like to encourage the departments to at least put some information up. So it doesn't look the best when we have blank pages out there with certain departments because we have some information. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, Michael Pitko. Uh oh, he pulled up sheet paper. <laughs> There's a few things going on. Um, I submitted the Stellar application. It was due at noon on the 1st of May. Um, like I've told you before, you only get two awards out of the entire state, so I'm not hoping out for a whole lot you know, at that point. But um, ready to, we're about halfway through the cuts. We have to cut about $40 million. Um, we'll be meeting Friday evening to uh, finish the cuts. The industrial part, uh, we've already lost a million five. Um, but we'll be okay on that. Um, Jana uh, at the school, she's surviving so far, which I anticipate she will go ahead and survive it. Um, child care is like number one in the state right now. And then just to show you how acute everything has become, she had a meeting with some school people and, and some local businesses, um, industries to talk about filling the classes. She's asking for five classes to be set up. Um, she has a waiting list now that would occupy 12 rooms. Wow. Yeah, it's getting worse and worse out there apparently. <laughs> um, so I suspect if there's already three or whatever it's wound, winds up being called, that, that'll be another project, which is what we want. That's the type of projects we need. Something that's going on already, it's an ongoing situation, so we can throw it in the pot at that point. Um, Charlie and I have written two Duke Energy grants, and we were awarded both of them. Uh, one is for $5,000 uh, to be added to the website, the Lopez. That's going to be helpful at that point. The other was for $10,000, which um, doesn't sound much, but actually what it brings to the table is a lot of due diligence that will help us cut down costs on um, studies that have to be done on that ground and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, we're waiting for the checks to come in, of course, but we've already met with the engineering firm uh, who's going to help us with all of this, and I can't put a figure to um, what this extra cost is, or gift is going to be, um, but I suspect it'll be in the five figure range at some point. So I'll keep you up to date on that one. Um, let's see what else. Um, actually, 
Oh, the housing study. Um, we are at the point now where um, we're actually going to select a developer, find a site, a site, and start the process. Um, I have six developers' information sitting on my desk, and every day we have another phone call. One of the things that has happened to the good is that um, the state has taken off certain restrictions for rural counties. And um, this is why we're getting a lot of interest in Fulton County right now. The bad part of it is they have to get their applications um, set up and going by uh, the end of July because that's when the deadline and the, the restrictions go back on. Um, so you, you'll see a lot of work going on at this point. I'll keep you guys involved and all that. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Sounds good. Uh, transportation study is now complete. I have to pick up the final paper copies at the um, chamber on my way to work. Um, we had a great conversation um, and a proposal that was circled back from Beaven Home that I believe Rick is going to come to um, Warsaw with me to review. So they have um, set out a date proposal. on that yet, though, right? What was that? We no got, date on that no yet. Yeah. Post election. Yeah. So. Okay. They <laughs> reviewed the information that was um, sent in from the committee and um, reviewed some information regarding mobile advocacy and are looking at a uh, part-time position that will be um, here anchored in Fulton County for the Beaven Home. So they've got to research that and see what they're really proposing and if that makes sense and a few other details. So that's pretty exciting to have that come back from all the hard work that in conversations. Um, and then had a great meeting with the individuals at in Project Independence at <coughs> Combined Community Services. Brian Johnson participated in that uh, via the phone, just looking at some opportunities to try to help um, move our folks who suffer um, from substance use and um, mental health issues, try to get them some support. So we've got a lot of good things going on. Good, good. A lot of hard work, but in a lot of long process, but it seems like it's moving in the right direction. We're excited. So, survey results for the transportation study should be to us in the summer to see what that tells us. So, okay. I'll present that once I receive it. Good. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one other thing that is really neat that I told the guys, um, I forgot about this, but we've received attention from other counties looking for ways to do what we do with collaborating together um, with the service providers. So we will have <coughs> some elected officials actually from Cosiasco County who will be coming here um, to the library to review Fulton County Hope um, to see if they can potentially do something similarly there. So we have that. We kind of need to you know, reverse the, reverse the uh, process there and tell them a little bit about how cool we are. So, yeah, so I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. It's Lisa, right? With yes. Transpo? Okay, did you have something for that Doug wanted us to sign? Yes. Okay. Okay, this is the You say quarterly or year? I think it's quarterly. It's quarterly. I think. It didn't work. Uh, okay. Okay. John, you're. Yeah. Well, you have the poly. We have the uh, inter interlocal agreement you're good with, right? For grant cash? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Um, and this is a, basically more than a point putting Grant County in here. We're going to motion to approve that interlocal agreement for. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three. All right. Okay, job. Thanks. So, uh, always going over the contract. Um, 
I'll go over, uh, I got permits. Uh, the first one I have is permit request 2417 from Mark Thompson of NIPSCO. And he's requesting a two by three road cut to install 57 feet of new gas line along North Lakeshore Drive, and on the lake, uh, starting 370 feet south of Northwest Lakeshore Drive. John Flynn did went and took care of this one. Checked it out. Needs everything you guys need. Yeah. Hate to see them cut the road, but there wasn't much choice. Okay. I have a permit 24 17. Is there any motion to approve? So moved. Yes, sir. Okay. Next one is permit request 24 18. Danielle Bell of NIPSCO. Uh, she's requesting to dig in the right of way uh, to remediate a minor gas leak and perform general maintenance at 2027 North Old US 31. Yeah, you're good. Uh, we didn't have much choice on that one. They had already uh, dug a hole and we caught them. <laughs> oh, <that's okay>. <laughs> 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 uh, so, but what they're doing, I mean, they, we're, we're okay with it. Um, they're in the right of way and they're, they're trying to repair a leaky line. So, uh, not much reason to stop. Yeah. Okay. For gas no. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Uh, next one I have is permit request 2419, OCM Engineering, and Miami Cass REMC are requesting a permit to install and therefore after maintain by pouring a new fiber optic line cable in the right of way starting at 1000 South and Meridian Road uh, and traveling west. 33,890 or 839 feet. Um, and my question to you on this one, and they asked is if you want to waiver the fee like you did with our RTC when they installed fiber. And this is for their new broadband down in that account. Oh. But this is going to come across our county line. Yeah. Oh, who's, who's it for? Uh, it's OCM Engineering and Miami Cass REMC. Okay. What is it, 50 bucks? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, we're not really out of anything. No. We can't really. Yeah. We're providing a service to the community. Yeah. They do. There's a lot of people yeah. along that stretch in our county that will be getting good out of that. So I'll make a motion to waive the fee for, the, for that permit. Second. And approve the permit. And approve the permit. Yeah. Okay. All okay. okay. Motion we'll carries through. Uh, the next one I have here, I sent to you Friday. It came in late. The next two did. Uh, is next modular, uh, and they are uh, requesting permit. Field, they want to develop it and use that driveway. Okay. 
entertain a motion for permit 2420. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries through. And the last one I have is permit request 2421. And this comes from Dennis Burton. Uh, and he's wanting to uh, make a road cut to install a tile. And it's a six inch tile uh, on 200 north. Uh, about 1,200 feet west of 400 west. And the reason he's asking for a road cut instead of a bore is because about two years ago, he came in and got a permit to do a bore, and it's failed because it's a mucky area, and the muck has shifted and changed under the road or something in there, and his tile isn't working again. So he don't have the bore at work? It didn't work the last time. Okay. And you're okay with it? I hate I hate to, but again, what road did you say it was? Two hundred north, okay. and it's down there where we really need to pave anyway. But he's already tried a bore, and it, it failed. He's requesting to cut it this time. That way, he can dig down and prepare the tile so it won't shift. Okay. Entertain a motion to approve permit twenty four twenty one. So moved. Second. All in favor? Um, going over work activities with the guys that have been passing holes, running the brush cutter, changing the culverts, uh, working on getting these community crossing roads ready, uh, and sodding roads. As they start sodding, they got old 31 South sodded and north up to uh, the bridge, which is going to chip this year. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a little bit. Um, federal aid. I haven't heard anything, but as far as I know, 31 South is still will go to pay this this month later. We've done all of our work done on it. There, you know, they start talking to them. It's about to be later this month. Um, Old 31 North, uh, we've got an RFP out. Uh, that was a federal aid project that was granted to us uh, earlier this year. And uh, we've got an RFP out to the hire consultant for the engineering on that, and those are due in on May 17th. Um, State Road 114, uh, between 35 and State Road 17. Uh, I was talking to Phil, he and he has that project. Phil was here earlier, and we're planning on starting that road closure tomorrow. Uh, it'd be somewhere between here and what, or 17 and Winnemac, but he didn't know exactly where they'd start. But we've got our detours in place for that. Um, and then uh, state, the end out's going to be closing uh, State Road 25 in about two to three weeks down here at Mud Creek. And we've got a detour set up around that one too. So they're finishing the bridge in Fulton. They've got it one lane at a time right now. When they're done with it, they're moving up to Mud Creek, but that'll be a hard closure. There won't be one way of traffic on it. Okay. So, you say uh, it's next week? They, he, they haven't given me a, a definite time, but it's the same company doing both bridges, and they're going to finish that one first, and they're over half done. So it took them four weeks to get that far. They, they're telling me two to three weeks they'll be moving up. Which is way ahead of the original schedule of July 4th. Um, did want to talk to you about uh, Bridge 161, um, and Katie can maybe help on this a little bit. But there's, we've had to change the bridge design on it a little bit because of the Nipsco gas line that runs on the east side of that. So we've had to basically shrink the bridge, I think, two foot. Uh, in doing that, that changes the federal standards for our speed limit through there. We'd have to make it a 45 mile an hour speed zone. Uh, general public's not going to notice any difference because it's still from a 24 foot bridge, I believe it's down to a 22 foot bridge. Will that cause your problem with farm equipment getting through there? It shouldn't. Right now we've got a 16 foot bridge. Huh. So, <laughs> okay. it, should, it should help it quite a bit. Okay. Um, I don't think the general public's ever going to really notice the change, other than we have to make it a 45 to meet federal guidelines for that. Um, they go over 55 now, 
that you know 16 foot bridge one lane but um, in order to comply with federal guidelines we need to do that so we created I talked got with Travis we did a traffic study on it and we created a uh, ordinance if you're willing to do that to reduce it and then that will that will give us every that will check all of our boxes on that bridge so we can continue forward Okay. I don't believe no. This no, wasn't. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it's on schedule to let in December. Okay. So but, what's, the, but the speed limit hasn't been advertised. Is what he's asked. Oh, and I didn't. Change it. I didn't think about that. So yeah. we probably yeah. need to hold so it we'll off till next week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to get into that. Yeah. Yeah. And that will still we'll be all right on that, won't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We coordinated with. So there's a high pressure gas main and it is deep enough that it couldn't be located and after, until it, it took a couple tries to locate it. Um, we obviously want to avoid having to relocate that high pressure gas main. It comes with a big expense. Um, so NIPSCO is in agreement that if we redesign slightly, which will not cost you guys anything, we're going to redesign it on our own, um, that they're agreeable to, we'll miss their gas main and be it would be fine. So um, we've coordinated with NDOT, we've coordinated with NIPSCO, and so that slight redesign will avoid major utility impacts. I think the cost of re relocating that gas line was between like, 500 and 900,000. So we don't want to do that. Yeah. So this is a lot simpler fix. Yeah. Wow. That ordinance doesn't have to be advertised until 30, within 30 days after its passage. You can still do a first and second reading on that. Anytime we change a speed limit or a stop sign, we like for people to come in so they can voice their concerns. Or, I mean, that's up to you guys. Well, we to do the first two readings now. Yeah, yeah, we you can do that and, and have them come in. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. But, Thank you. But that's my opinion. I mean, well, uh, we could get it. We'll get it out there. Yep, yeah, they know about it. Do you want to advertise that, Christina, or would you prefer I do? I don't advertise them ever until after they're passed. Okay. They have to be advertised within 30 days of their passage. So advertise it for John. Okay. Okay, so we have ordinance 0605 It's an ordinance establishing a speed limit on Florida County Road 800 West near Grass Creek and Wayne Township. Whereas the Fulton County Highway Department and Fulton County Sheriff have completed a traffic study of County Road 800 West as described in subsection 1, it is therefore ordained that the speed limit set forth in subsection 1 supersedes all prior speed limits at this location. It is further ordained that the Fulton County Highway Department post appropriate speed limit signs to advertise motorists of the speed limit at this location. Subsection 1, speed zone for County Road 800 West. 45 miles per hour speed zone on County Road 800 West starting at State Road 17 and continuing south for 5,280 feet, ending speed zone at County Road 800, 850 South. <coughs> I've entertained a motion to uh, the second reading by Tyler. So second. moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Motion carries. We have uh, ordinance 06052024. It's a speed zone ordinance for uh, County Road 800 West. Okay. okay. Um, next thing I want to talk to you about is I've got a, a contract quote from um, Pavement Solutions. They've done our uh, crack ceiling in the past, and what I'm looking at doing is crack ceiling old 31 from the city limits up to the bridge, and then we'd like to chip seal that this year and then restripe it. We'll probably restripe the whole old 31 too while we're at it. Uh, but I'd like to crack seal south of the bridge. That's the section that's not on the federal aid grant. We want to preserve that as long as we can. North of the bridge, we believe we'll hold until we repave. Uh, then I've also got estimates on here for uh, Zebra and Park and 13th Streets uh, here in town. We paved them several years ago, and they're, it's time for them to have some maintenance on them. We'll crack seal them up, and then we'll chip them later this year we use 90 gas which rick's familiar with that it'll help lock it in quicker it won't be the dusty chip seal that you see sometimes um, 
and then also while we're in there, I'd like to do Fortna and Frontier. Um, if you're good with all that price. This is all in your budget? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion carries three. Um, next thing I wanted to talk to you about, I've uh, got an employee, Jim Morrow. He was uh, injured uh, about a week ago. Uh, off off of the county time on his own personal time over the weekend. Um, he, he's out of FMLA. He's requesting a leave of absence. Uh, I'm going to ask for uh, to go ahead and just approve six weeks in case he needs it. It looks like he's healing up pretty good. He can probably come back in about a week's time. But just in case, so I don't have to keep coming back and asking him. Just ask for the maximum amount of six weeks. Okay. Leave of absence without pay. Okay. Guys, any questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk to you today about, um, which all three of you are aware, Leslie's going to be leaving, so I'll be without a clerk. She gave me an end date of July 11th. So I would like to go ahead and advertise for that job and get started. I figure. We advertise for a couple weeks, pick somebody, give them a couple weeks for to give their their boss notice. Uh, that would get, allow us about uh, I'd put us about the first of June, a little after, and now give us about 30 days or so, four to six training. weeks of training, uh, yeah, which is yeah, greatly sure. needed. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. just get with us so you know all the rules and how to okay. yeah. all set up. But, are you, guys, awesome. are you guys, I guess, are you okay with us? Yeah, you have uh, to put advertise somebody here else. for seven days first, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I'd have to be advertised here seven and then yeah. another seven in the general public, at yeah. least if we don't hire within. Yeah. We're, we're, I'm okay with everything. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I'll have to ask council for approval on that. Yeah. Yeah. Ask Christina, she'll know how okay. to go about it, whatever she says. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have for today, other than the bids, yeah, fine. which uh, Brooks was a low bid, and they met all the quantities and they met all the polys. So you're going for a lump sum, they get everything then, right? Yes, and that's the way we bid it. Yeah, out. I thought that was. You say Brooks, and that's what yeah, we yeah, yeah, first one. Brooks. Okay. I want to entertain a motion that we approve the Brooks contract for the $1,394,430.90 for the community crossing projects. So moved. Second. All in favor. Motion carries three out. Okay, you guys have a chance to look over the minutes? Yep. I didn't see nothing wrong with them. Yep. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, all there. Motion carries 3-0. Had a chance to look over all the financials, uh, transfers, claims, appropriations. Any questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. We had one question. I think yeah. that got answered, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. The insurance claim docket uh, for the disbursements of 411.24 to 417 is $63,417.08. Uh, payroll claim the docket for four nineteen of two hundred and sixty eight thousand nine hundred and sixty three dollars and thirty five cents the payroll deduction of one hundred and twenty one thousand three hundred dollars and eighty six cents uh, claim docket uh, 
tax sale interest and redemption owed to buyer of four hundred sixty-six dollars and sixty-five cents. And uh, solid waste district coast fees of thirty-three thousand three hundred and thirty-three dollars and thirty-three cents. We have utilities uh, twenty thousand two hundred and sixty-nine dollars and thirty-two cents. Uh, May miscellaneous May six miscellaneous claims at two hundred and thirty-three thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars and thirty-four cents. Uh, credit card claim eight thousand seven hundred and thirty-two dollars and fifty-seven cents. Uh, payroll for five three uh, two hundred seventy thousand six hundred eighty-three dollars and ninety-six cents with a deduction of ninety-eight thousand six hundred fifty-two dollars and ninety cents. Uh, transfers uh, from the treasurer. Uh, $250 from legal fees to mileage. And the treasurer, uh, $250 from legal fees to continuing education. And the treasurer, uh, $75 from dues to shredding. Communications, $1,000 for mileage to training. We have an appropriation request for communications uh, for the equipment. It's for the portable radios for Fulton County Sheriff's Department. Uh, for the volunteers to be assigned to responders. The radios are county assets, $135,378. Those uh, IDs were turned in. Okay. 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 Do we, uh, any old business, Rick? Nope. Dave? Nope. Holly? Nope. Christine? Nope. Public? I have one old business. I do apologize. Uh, the warning sirens, um, we are in tornado season, weather uh, disruptive. And I just want to remind everybody. That it's usually the township trustees or private property owners or like the parks that maintain those the county does not so uh, we do have one that's not working up at Miser's trailer park in that area which is called another trailer park Kristen can you I don't remember it's changed dates because of the owners but they uh, disengaged that um, with an electric pump and stuff that it was attached to so when that happens uh, they need to contact that property owner or the township trustee. So if you do get complaints about that, we just do not maintain them, but we help get them grants um, to put them up. Okay. I did think about one more thing. Uh, anything more on the house? Uh, yes, Lauren and I are working on that to get uh, the dates. So probably it'll be in June because okay. of Miss May, right? Okay. Yeah, so that we can get that done and okay. be selling it. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Okay. New business, Rick? Nope. Dave? Nope. Holly? Nope. Christine? No. New business? Okay. Any public comment? Okay. Um, we're going <coughs> to, the commissioner's going to recess for just a short period of time. We have an executive meeting and we're going to reconvene after that um, if there's any action we need to take. Any motion to recess for our executive meeting? So moved. Second. All favor? Motion carries 3 0. Okay, thank you, everybody. 5 6, uh, commission meeting back in order. Uh, we had an executive session and we had a um, an affidavit here that we need to sign for pending litigation. So um, I'd entertain a motion that we uh, sign this affidavit uh, for the attorneys. So moved. Second. All in favor? That motion carries.
Jim. Uh, I get it? How do you need this? Oh, yeah, we just need to get over to Lauren. Okay. I mean, you want to skip on over there? Yeah, I can skip on over there. I want to see it. <laughs> I may <mean>, walk. <laughs> so we'll do his H chart and get a copy of that too, probably. Who? H on. HR get a copy of that too? Or not? Uh, Does that work, do you know? No? No, it's good for Lauren. Okay. Because okay. yeah, like, it'll all be involved in that lawsuit. Okay. So. Okay then. I entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.